Hello, I'm Freezing Inferno, and I'm going to read your mind. I bet when you clicked on this video, your reaction was a variant of one of the following three. Reaction number one. Ooh, I've never heard of this game before! Reaction number two. A let's play of Super Ghouls and Ghosts? Fresno, are you out of your tiny Canadian mind? Do you have a death wish or something? That game is going to kill you! And last but certainly not least, the very common reaction number three. Hey, I don't give a fuck about this video! Regardless of your reaction, let's get official. I'm Freezing Inferno, and welcome to Let's Play Super Goddamned Ghouls in Ghosts. To get a little hyper-informative here, it is the third game in Capcom's Ghosts and Goblins series. We had Ghosts and Goblins for the NES, then Ghouls and Ghosts for the Sega Genesis, and now, Super Ghouls and Ghosts for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And what's the plot of this game, pray tell? Well, you're seeing it. This is all the plot you're gonna get, really. Demon kidnap princess, go get her back! It was 1991, it was a simpler time. You can get away with this. So let's get all hyper-explanatory here very quick. This is Knight Arthur. Knight Arthur is trying to save his princess, Guinevere or Prin Prin or something like that. He can jump and double jump. Treasure chests are very helpful. They contain weapons and armor. This here's a weapon, the torch. It's kind of like holy water. It just runs along the ground and you shoot an arc, sort of. Not really the best weapon, but eh. Just showing it off here. I'll do my best to show off every weapon. If I don't get it in main play, I'll definitely do an odds and ends video. Finding treasure chests is very important, because it'll let you do things like this. We now have bronze armor! Bronze armor upgrades your weapon to a magic weapon. This is a magic torch, it'll shoot off a bigger flame. And this here's a scythe. Now, you can only have one of those on the screen at a time. I do not know how I avoid getting hit by that, but I'm going to roll with it. But it does a lot of damage and has a big hitbox of sorts. But it's not the best weapon, no. Believe me, I mean, you can only have one of those on the screen at a time. That can really screw you over in the later stages. But for stage one here, it's okay to just show it off. Show what it does. And such and such. Now, you can further upgrade your armor to something very wonderful. And it's highly advised you do that. But we're not going to mince words here. This game's hard. This game's brutally, brutally, brutally hard. It's probably the easiest of the Ghosts and Goblins series, but... By God, that's not saying much, considering what this game is. So now we have Gold Armor. Gold Armor lets you charge up your weapon to use a magic attack. You have different magic attacks for each weapon. So the Scythe was a magic tornado, and the magic lands here. When you charge that bad boy up, you get magic lightning. Now, in general, some spells are better than others, but it all depends on the weapon. You could have a useless weapon for regular attacks, but it has a really good magic spell, like the scythe there. And you can have a really, really good weapon, but its magic spell is not the best. Now what just happened there with that earlier uh, Bone Pillar Fire guy was... I lost my shield. My shield with the gold armor will protect me from a projectile. It's kind of finicky. It doesn't come to play that often, but it's helpful to have a shield. You can upgrade your shield to a blue shield, and that'll uh, give you a, a few extra hits. Three, I think. Now, money bags. Money bags are very, very important. Because they give you points, and, well, you need points to get extra lives. But it's more than that. You collect a certain number of money bags, I think it's like 10 or 12, or somewhere around that, I'm not completely sure what the number is. You collect that many, you get an extra credit. A continue, if you will. Now, that's highly helpful for a hard game like this. You get enough money bags, you essentially have infinite continues. Now, what makes this game hard are two things. Well, one is the jumping. And if you if you jump, it's like Castlevania jumping. You, once you jump, you're committed to it. And this here is the magic dagger. It's like laser daggers. Laser daggers are cool, and you can shoot those daggers really fast. It's a very, really, really good weapon. Probably the second best in the game. Now, the other thing that makes this game hard is even if you are fully powered up, one hit will, uh, do something very bad to you. You will see that momentarily, but let's get the bow. Magic bow is a homing missile. This is my favorite weapon. 
because it's a homing missile. And I got hit. Even if you're fully powered up, getting hit once will knock you into your boxers. Which is sort of a cute Ghosts and Goblins tradition. Oh, you get hit and now you're running around in your underwear. You get hit again like this, you're dead. So no matter how much you're charged up, two hits and you are dead. Now this section is fairly simple. All you have to do is stand on the pillars. You can avoid the tidal wave. But Fresno, where's the logic behind that? I mean, you, you, the tidal wave should wash you away. Shut up and enjoy it. This is a good action platformer. And yes, this is a good action platformer. It's a sadistically hard action platformer, but it's a good one. Luckily, we've got our uh, starting armor back. I'll take it. It's an extra hit, even if I don't have my super homing shot. I still have the regular bow, which is still my favorite weapon in the game, because it arcs up like this and it shoots double shots. And you can shoot it rapidly, too, so it's one of the better weapons. Not so good for things that are coming straight at you, but... Most of the annoying things in this game are coming from above or the side or whatever, and you can get them very, very easily, like so. So we're in the second section of this stage here. Now, getting treasure chests is not always a good idea. Why is that, you ask? Well, some of them are booby-trapped, like this one right here. Oh no, it was a bear trap. It would have knocked me out of my armor. Yeah, the game is not nice like that. Well, let's see what's in this one. I wonder what it could be. Oh, it's just a torch. I don't need a torch. I'd rather have the bow. Because we're almost done with stage one here. Thank goodness. Oh, look, a free life. How nice. You get one at 20,000 points, and then every uh, 40,000 points after, I believe. Or it could be 50, something like that. And now for the other trap that's in treasure chests. The Magician! He hits you with his magic bolt and he turns you into some useless thing, depending on what armor you have. Since I had the regular armor, I turned into a cute little seal. You'll see the others as we go along, but for now, we are going to fight our first boss. The Cockatrice. Cockatrice. What a nice name to say. He has two attacks, but you're only going to see one because I killed this guy very, very quickly. Don't worry, I'll show you it eventually. Odds and ends. But just hit him in his stupid face. And watch out for his extendo neck. And he will go down fairly, fairly quickly. Bye-bye, buddy. Well, that's stage one beaten. That was kind of tricky, but we did it. All right, well, I shall see you next time for more Super Goddamned Ghouls and Ghosts. Until then.